you'll have had your tea. The doings of Hamish and Dougal. Today, Burns Night. Oh, who can that be? It's me! I was talking to myself. So was I. Well, what do you... What do you want? Who are you talking to now? You, you great numpty. What do you want? Oh, I'm fed up shouting through this letterbox. Why have you brought a letterbox? <laughs> In case the post comes while I'm out. <laughs> Aye, but if it does, the postie will just push your letters through the door. He can't. Why not? I've got the letterbox here with me. You great thicky. Oh, come in, for goodness sake. Oh, at last. Ah, Hamish, there you are. You'll have had your tea. Yes. Uh... Well, now, just put down that stupid letterbox. Aye, right. Wait a minute. There's a letter here for you. Oh, must have gone to the wrong address. Oh, jings. Callum the postie needs his eye testing. <laughs> How's that going to help when he can't read nor write? True enough. Now let's turn our attention to this letter. Aye, who's it from? Now we'll never know. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Give me the pieces. We can stick it. My sentiments precisely. <laughs> no, no, no. Stick it together with this handy roll of sticky back plastic. Ah, there. Oh, it's from the lad. Oh. Why have you torn it up again? <laughs> oh, my aching feet. I'm a martyr to bunions. Tomato and onions, put them in the fridge. <laughs> Mrs. Naughty, what are you doing here? This is Tuesday, you normally have it off. True. <laughs> Tell me you've forgotten the date. The date? Uh, which one of us were you expecting to... Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. This is Twelfth Night. I've come to take down your fripperies. But we're not wearing any. <laughs> so I see. And may I suggest you put some clothes on before his ship arrives? No. We're just this minute out of the jacuzzi. I didn't know you'd got a jacuzzi. Well, it wasn't until Hamish got into it. <laughs> Be fair, it was my sporran full of refreshers that did it. Aye, more than once. <laughs> now, come along, come along. Let's get rid of those decorations. And, Mr Hamish, you can let down the inflatable Santa. Right you are. Right, now where's that inflatable Santa? Hello, everyone. Do you mind if I open a window? Carry on. <laughs> ah, that's better. Now... Dougal, I sent you a letter. I hope you haven't torn it up. Your lordship, I cannot tell a lie. What letter? The letter that arrived this morning. Oh, that letter, yes, it was delivered to Hamish by mistake. So I brought it straight to Dougal. And I got the letter in the end. And then you tore it up. And then I tore... No, 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 I, I read it with great interest. Good. So what's your answer? My answer... Well, the answer is I, I would have been... If it not for the proviso that had, had, you, had you sent it yesterday, then definitely yes. Even no uh, would, uh, depending on, of course, <laughs> the terms, I would have said yes. Well, such and such, and then I say to you, as I expect you want to hear, to hear your answer, which is quite uh, simply the answer is... Uh, is, uh, is... <laughs> 
Hamish! I'm just letting down Santa. <laughs> Hamish, you're letting everybody down. <laughs> now, look here. As you'll remember from my letter, I'm planning a big party for everyone in the Glen. We're going to celebrate Burns Night. But November the 5th is months away. We commemorate the birth of our Scottish national poet, Robert Burns, on January the 25th. Will you two organise the traditional Burns Night Supper? Yes or no, yes, splendid, over to you, goodbye. Well... Here we are in the public library. Dougal, why are we here in the public library? We are here in the public library to find out what the hell is Burns Night. Oh, look, here's a book. What the hell is Burns Night? (laughs) By His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh. (laughs) You... you made that up. No, he really exists. (laughs) Duke of Edinburgh, eh? Well, he should know what he's talking about, being a Scotsman. I thought he was German. Ah, he's no more German than Zorba the Greek. Here, give me... <laughs> just, just, just give me that book. We'll find all we need in here. Oh, let's hope so, because I've never heard of Burns Night. Well, of course you haven't. You're a Scotsman. <laughs> Burns Night is an old English tradition invented by foreigners. Where is it celebrated? Everywhere but Scotland. Now, come on. <laughs> We'd better get this book home and start boning up. All right, you two. That's enough boning up. You ought to be poring over this book. (laughs) That's just what we've been doing. That's right, and now we know exactly how to organise the perfect Burns Night celebration. Mrs Nochty, you will be in charge of Burns Night catering. Very well. I shall serve a delicious seafood platter with sauce Marie Rose and a mixed leaf salad. No, no, no. The book says it has to be the traditional meal. Haggis. And what might that be, may I ask? (laughs) Haggis is a traditional dish the English believe we eat. Well, apparently the vegetables to accompany the haggis are traditionally tatties and neeps. Oh, you've lost me there. <laughs> Look here, here's a picture of a haggis, tatties and neeps. Ooh! Are you sure this isn't a medical dictionary? <laughs> no, no, no. Look, it says this shows the traditional haggis, made from oatmeal and onion. Oh, a vegetarian dish. Not quite. Uh, you add a pound of suet plus the liver, heart and the lungs of a sheep. All minced up and stuffed into a dead sheep's stomach. Oh, I can't see Nigella getting a laughing gear around that. (laughs) All washed down with a fine malt whiskey. It'd have to be. Oh, speaking of which, we'd better pay a visit to the drive-through distillery to place a very large order for the party. (laughs) Then what are we waiting for? Uh, This bus. Dougal? Yes. Why didn't we get on that bus? Oh, oh. oh, did you not realize that was the phantom bus that haunts the village? How do you know? Did you not notice how it glided through that wall of my sitting room and then out through the other? Oh, a phantom bus! I... This is the real one. (laughs) Two singles to the distillery, please. Welcome to the drive through distillery. Can I help you? Good morning. Good morning, Hamish. Now, leave this to me. Uh, where is that list of mine? Oh, yes, in my sporran. Somewhere in here. Let's see. 
McDougall. Not now, Hamish. I nearly... <laughs> I've nearly got my hand on it. <laughs> Dougal, that's my spot on your family. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, please carry on. Oh, very well. Look here, are you going to place an order or not? Aye, uh, here's the list. Right. Uh, we would like a lot of whiskey, please. Do you have anything on special offer? This is your lucky day. With a hundred cases, you get a free electronic sporran alarm. Oh. <laughs> Better late than never. Ah, yes. Right, it's a deal. Now, let me just have a rummage for my checkbook. Here it is. Spoil sport. <laughs> now, oh, who shall I make this check out to? Go oh, leave it blank. I'll fill in the name when I'm writing the amount. That's very kind of you. <laughs> Shopping at the drive through distillery. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Dougal. Eh? Did you not think that voice sounded very like the lad? Oh, now you come to mention it. You don't think. Oh, Hamish, as if the lad would have the gall to sell us all that whiskey for his own party. <laughs> oh, no, of course not. Uh, right, Hamish, you load that 100 cases of whiskey onto the bus while I gaze into the distance. <laughs> right, you are. Hup! One. Two, hup, three. This is no time to be doing press-ups. <laughs> Shift those cases. All oh, right. Hup, one, hup, two, hup, three, hup, four. Hup, ninety-eight. Hup, ninety-nine. Hup! One hundred! Well done, Hamish. If only the bus had waited. <laughs> Look, why don't we stop this vehicle? Good thinking. Stop! Good morning. I wonder if you could drop us off with these cases of whiskey at the Big Hoose. He's nodding his head. Oh, thank you. Shall we load them up? He's nodding his head again and indicating the back of the vehicle. Very kind of you, sir. He's smiling now and giving the thumbs up. He's very sociable for a non-speaking role. <laughs> <laughs> right, Hamish, let's get these cases loaded. Right. Oh, 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 oh. There's plenty of room in the back. I just move those flowers. There's space for more on top of the big box. <laughs> Thank you very much. You got us here quicker than the bus. <laughs> He's nodding and winking as if to say, don't mention it, only too pleased to help. Any time you need a hand, I'm your man. <laughs> Just ring the Happy Endings funeral parlour <laughs> and ask for Jolly Mick. All that with a nod and a wink, eh? <laughs> oh, well, I was paraphrasing. <laughs> Well, we can't stand here chatting with Jolly Mick all day. Ring the lad's doorbell. Mrs. Nochty, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm so glad to see the pair of you. Whatever's the matter? Oh, come with me to the kitchen and all will be revealed. Well, that's very kind, but let's deal with your problem first. <laughs> My problem is in the kitchen. Oh. What on earth have you been doing in here, woman? I've been cooking. We can see that, but what is it? It's the catering for the barn's night. Well, I can see the tatties bubbling merrily in the pot there. And I recognise the neeps waiting to be mashed. But uh, help me out here. What is that nine-foot-high steaming mound of pulsating tissue that's edging its way across the floor? <laughs> You mean you don't recognise it? Oh, good grief, Mrs. Naughty, it's the haggis. And it's coming towards us. It's alive. Look at the size of it. Hey, Mrs. a time and a place for everything. <laughs> oh, it's got me. It's got me. Don't worry, Hamish. I'm off. Oh, for goodness sake. That's not a haggis. It's 
It's my nephew, Kevin, from Pitlochry. Oh, so it is, of course, yes. We remember we, Kevin. Kevin's kindly offered to play the bagpipes for the barn supper. Haven't you, Kevin? Oh, oh. well, that's very good of you. And don't just stand there moaning. Go and get your bagpipes. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Noxie, we'll leave you to get on with cooking that haggis. Well, there is no haggis. We can't have Burns Night without haggis. Not to worry. I'm proposing to improvise. Oh, but how? What do you think of this? Oh, well, looks like haggis. Mm. Mm. Tastes like haggis. Mm. Oh, no, mm, yeah. But, um, oh, what is it? It's a can of dog food in a condom. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Noxie, I have to say it's an improvement. <laughs> I am well worth the extra expense. It yes. slips down a treat. It does, <laughs> doesn't it? It is well done, Mrs. Noxie. And spotted dick to fall. If you're not very careful, yes. <laughs> oh, come along now, Hamish. There's work to be done. Well, here we are at the railway station. If you say that one more time... Well, there might be blind people listening. Now, look. <laughs> look here. <laughs> look. Look, here comes his lairdship. Hello, you two. My guests from London should be here very soon. Now, you two are arranging transport up to the big hoops. I should think you'll need a pony and trap. No, thanks. I've just had one. <laughs> Don't worry, your lordship. Don't worry, your lordship. We've hired a people carrier. Ah, that's right. Big Tam's going to carry the people to the bus stop. Ah, splendid. And unless I'm very much mistaken, here comes the train now. <laughs> By God, I was mistaken, wasn't I? <laughs> what does it say on that board, Dougal? It says, here comes the train now. a lot of people. Are they all coming to the party? No, no, most of them are just extras. I'll point out the real guests. Ah, look, there's Girls Aloud with David Walliams, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Oh, sorry, madam. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's the lovely Zara Phillips. <laughs> and she's brought her mother. And there's... <laughs> There's Nicky off Big Brother. There's Pete Doherty with the lovely Sterling Moss. Rene Zellweger, of course. And it's a pity Geoffrey Archer said he wasn't coming. And here he is. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. How lovely to see you all. Especially you two, without Bonner. Now, it's a good ten miles from here to the big hoose. That's why I came in the car. See you later. <laughs> Excuse me, my fellow guests and I, from all corners of the Commonwealth... No, no, dear, we're busy. We are deeply concerned about the lack of transport to convey us to the big heist. Oh, well, there's always one. I, I knew she was trouble the minute she got off the train. At this time of year, one's thoughts often turn to questions such as... What arrangements have you dickheads made <laughs> to convey one to the party? Why don't you tell it enough off? Don't you realise who this is? No, I don't. Oh. Does anybody recognise this woman? <laughs> Hi, that's Maud Betty, the bus driver. Bus driver? Uh. We're in luck. And look, she's brought her bus with her. Hi. 53 singles to the big goose, please. Hold tight. <laughs> Yeah.
Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you'll join me in congratulating Mrs. Nocte on providing a truly beautiful dinner. Shame it didn't taste as good as it looked. I think we all had very high hopes for that ribbed haggis. But that's... <laughs> That's neither here nor there, as the man said when he put his truss on upside down. The entertainment will begin shortly, but for the moment, please sit back and enjoy your brandy and liqueurs as I come round to each table to present you with your bills. <laughs> come in. I brought you that book of Rabbi Burns' poetry you asked for. You'll see from the stickers on the cover it is a recommended by Richard and Judy. Two for the price of one, as I believe they're known. Thank you, Mrs. Nocte. <laughs> ah, I see you've marked the page. Oh, that'll sponge off. <laughs> a hem. <clears throat> Address to a haggis by Rabbi Burns. <laughs> fair, fair, your honest, sonsy face, great chieftain of the pudding race. A boon them are yet tack your place. Paint, tripe, or them. Weel are ye wordy, or a grace. As langs my arm. What's he talking about? <laughs> oh, he's pissed. Oh. <laughs> uh, thank you, your lordship. But I hadn't finished. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, no evening of this nature would be complete without some Scottish dancing. So, who's up for a Highland reel? <laughs> Very well, then... It's welcome to real or no real. <laughs> Hello? You're the what? <laughs> oh, the banker, right? What? <laughs> Noel? Noel who? No, he isn't here. No. Well, just our good luck, I suppose. Goodbye. <laughs> now, as you all know, it is traditional for everyone to do a party piece on Burns Night. So, for my moment of glory, I shall read out some parish announcements. Knock him dead, Tiger. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Hush has asked me to request that churchgoers should not park their bicycles up against the vicar's wife. <laughs> If this doesn't stop, she has threatened to start clamping. <laughs> oh, uh... Now, congratulations to Dr. McCorgy, who has successfully crossed a lettuce with a kiba and got a salad that tosses itself. <laughs> the Reverend also asked me to remind you all of the appeal for the church spire, as it still has not been returned. <laughs> Next up to entertain you, it's your own, your very own, Mrs. Beyoncé Nochte. And her performing seal. <laughs> Thank you, Archie. Have a fish. Oh, good boy, Archie. Yes, now sit still while I bring on my performing seal. <laughs> Jesus is naughty. That seal can play the accordion, all right. <laughs> can I do my party piece now? No, oh, very well. Ladies and gentlemen, my impression of the stag at bay. <gasps> well, really? Yes, that was very, very ingenious, but... Uh... <laughs> But I do think um, I do think that bit at the end was quite uncalled for. Oh come on, we've all seen stags do that. Yes, but there's usually another stag there. <laughs> no, no, I should have sensed trouble when I saw you mounting the podium. Oh look, here comes Kevin and his bagpipes akimbo. Oh. Well, we've got the bagpipes, we've got the band. It must be time for a song. It certainly is. What do you want me to sing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, your 
Championship, we have taken a vote. <laughs> and we all want you to sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. No, I'm staying right here. Damn! Why don't I sing something that we all know? Why don't you sing something that you know? Tell you what, why don't you all join me in a rousing little number made famous by Sir Harry Lauder and his sister Esther, entitled <laughs> Keep Right On to the End of the Road. I'll do the first verse. And we'll do the tune. <laughs> Kevin, haul out your chanter and hit those pipes. Every road through life is a long, long road filled with joys and sorrows, too. As you journey on, and your heart will yearn for the things most dear to you. With wealth and love to sow, but onward we must go. Tea, the Doings of Hamish and Dougal was written and performed by Barry Cryer and Graham Garden, with Alison Steadman as Mrs. Nochty and Jeremy Hardy as the Laird. Kevin the Piper was played by Robert White. Jolly Mick the Undertaker was Sir Ian McKellen, and Mad Betty the Bus Driver was played by herself. Other parts were played by members of the audience. Music was arranged by John Garden and performed by Karen Street, Ros Stephen, Richard Price, and Scott Hammond. The producer was John Naismith.